Welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome everybody. I think something stayed live on my computer. Nope, must have went away. All right, hang tight, everyone. I'm just getting our uh, PowerPoint pulled up. Getting my tech stuff in line here before we start. All right, I think we're about ready to start. I know everybody's tuning in. Uh, first of all, let me check in and see if everybody can hear me loud and clear. You know. Can everybody hear me okay? You can unmute. Do I have one yeah? I'm here. We can hear you. All right, cool. Yep. All right, I know we got people just kind of starting to flow in. So I'll do a little bit of an introduction here just to say, why the heck are you here listening to Brad Korn talk about fine hidden listings? Um, I will tell you the, the first thing is I've been in the real estate business for a little over 30 years, about 32 to be exact. Um, I have sold over 2,500 homes during my career and, and stop there for a minute because I'm going to break this down as to why that number is important and, and what that says about me in my real estate business, because it was not done with a team of 50 people. Okay. Uh, for over 20 years, I sold a hundred properties a year. I will say that my team has been as big as nine people. Um, and I invite you guys to turn your cameras on. I mean, here's the other thing. We're all real estate agents and we're all from all across the country. And you got invited here because of your movement mortgage loan officer uh, is, and I'll explain this in a little bit that I know them well, and I'm working with them and helping connect the real estate agent and the mortgage professional because it's a it's it is the most powerful team you could probably have in real estate um but i want you to know that as a real estate agent you want your video on and you want to plug in because where do we make a lot of money with each other see if anybody's there referrals <laughs> oh i know it's a dumb it was a dumb easy answer uh, not that you're dumb. Uh, that was smart that you actually chimed in because now we know you're paying attention and you're you're going to get some referrals probably. So here's the thing. After today, I will tell you as a real estate agent, any trainings that I go to, I'm also networking along with the people in the screens. I'm like let, just making a note of the names and um, what markets we are in, depending on how many people are here. And at the end, what I'm about to share with you is going to help you grow your business. And if we want to share what markets we're in or and or probably the best thing is just to put it in the chat. I'm trying to find my chat box, actually. Um, put it in the chat, um, your name, your contact information and what market you work. That's how we're going to do that. Because um, there's going to be a lot of referral business. And the fact that you're tuning into this, the stuff that I'm going to share with you, I... I will say that it's not about finding the hidden listings. They're there. It's just that sometimes we get so deep in our own forest that we don't think about the places we can go find new business. And so I've been doing this for 32 years, sell 100 homes a year for over 20 something years. My team was as big as nine people and it's been as big as one person. So in 2019 and 2020 during COVID, me, you're looking at the entire corn team in Kansas City selling 70 homes a year with a great system 
and a database that had been built over 20 something years, the relationships that were built in there. So I'm a big time database relationship guy. And if you stay in tune with your the loan professional that invited you here today, there's going to be a lot more of this kind of level of training coming. Um, I don't I don't have anything to sell you. Um, I am here strictly as a business partner to help you grow your business because your movement mortgage loan officer invited you. Okay. So um, there's nothing to sell here. This is something that they have, they have earned to give to you. I'm trying to figure out how to make my screen look better here because it didn't go into the PowerPoint mode. Like I wanted it to, there we go. All right. I'm going to be good now. I, I feel a little better about the, the visual that you'll have here. In a minute. But um, so before I get started, though, just because I know real estate agents are outgoing, um, does anybody want to unmute and, and tell me or put in the chat anything that you're when you saw this title and you got invited to this class? What are you really hoping to walk away with um, from this class? So I can make sure it's something that we do actually touch on if I don't have a specific slide on it. But maybe a better way to ask the question is what's going on in your market? What is your biggest struggle? And or what are you hoping to take away from this that might fill part of that struggle? Does anybody want to share? Is business rolling? I mean, you guys have more listings than you can manage right now. Um, your buyers are finding their properties pretty quick. You don't have anybody like waiting for something to hit. Is everything going well? Or what do you think a challenge is that is going on in your market? This is just agent to agent talking. Brad. Yeah. Always good seeing you, brother. Haven't you too, man. In a couple of years. Yes. Um, and and whenever you're on, I, I get on. I don't even like Sissy and Dom, but when I heard you were going to be on there, I thought it would be a good idea. <laughs> I'm glad you so, turned your camera on. I was like, yeah, awesome. And he's here. Yeah, yeah. So um, basically, we've gotten back to a normal market in really the Houston area. And I've always said that the Houston area is the best bang for the buck anyway, because um, I've, I've heard from agents from all over the, the country. And uh, what we've had is we're, we're having to reduce prices that were listed before. Um, I actually got certified to do the 72 sold program and it's worked out okay. I'd give it probably a six or seven right now because I think a lot of those uh, referrals are going to other areas of the country. I'm not sure that Houston, because it is a great market, is getting a lot of response from the ads. So um, it's really kind of cool. I've been doing it 18 years and it's back to what I consider a normal market. I mean, you don't have to throw a dart and everybody comes. Although there's still those people that don't buy the house that they come to see or they're interested in, they got to go buy another house. So capturing those, we're fortunate we have a, a buyer's agent that does all that. And then um, we pretty much exclusively use uh, Dom and Sissy for, awesome. for all of them. Uh, they do my personal stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a good deal. So basically, you know, when I saw over here, you know, about, you know, find the properties that nobody else is finding, I, that raised a big flag for me. Yeah. Well, and and I love what you said, and I'll open it up for anybody else if they have any questions here in just a second, but just tag it on to that, that we are going to talk about that today. This is actually a lot of what I did in my earlier days in real estate when I got in. And um, we're in a market now where we need to do more than what we did last year or the year before, because it was a pretty fun ride for a little bit. Now it's kind of a weird and people aren't listing as much. And we think they're not moving because of the interest rates. We think that they're not doing this or that. And honestly, talking to top agents, and, and I mean, we show up around those same groups all the time, Vinny, and everybody's actually doing really well. And the difference that I put it, my perspective is where I used to carry 40, 50 active listings. And I, I mean, I was in the office eight hours a day and managing the listings, grabbing the buyers that were coming off the listings, all this stuff. We were working hard. <laughs> Today, it seems like we're just listing and selling and we get a buyer and sell. So we're moving everything so fast that if you don't have systems in place to keep 
that coming in, it will seem slower, but you're also going to seem slower because we're not holding on to anything. We're not having to do all this extra work. So our profitability is through the roof. Would you agree? Like that's kind of where we are. Absolutely. You know, it's the inventory hasn't changed um, where we are in Texas. I mean, there's a neighborhood going up every five miles. And so there's, there's plenty of inventory, except there's not enough inventory, if that makes sense. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's, we're way behind and it's, it's going to take a while to catch up. So that's the best news I have for you as a real estate agent. But let me say what I realized in this market is that whenever my inventory, like I, it was average for me to carry 40 listings back in the day. Right. Yeah. And if my inventory level got down to 20, that's when I knew I was about out of business because those 20 were going to sell. And so I either like dropped the ball on something. I wasn't following through on my system. I wasn't keeping in touch. I wasn't feeding the database. I wasn't doing something or the market shifted and wiped out half of our inventory pretty quick. Either way, I remember thinking I've got to keep around 40 because that pays the bills and pays the team. And so I would just push the pedal to the metal and I would do more. And this year we hit that again. And what I started doing was looking at the things I used to do that were pretty smart, like working smart. And we're going to talk about that, but it's finding these hidden listings. So I actually am going to switch this over to the screen. I, I'm not going to stop anybody else from sharing. So still share if you want to. Um, but uh, let me get this. Thank God here. Sissy got on here because I don't really like looking at Dom's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you got to always have a Sissy. I love you, Vinny. <laughs> um, all right. So cool. Can you guys see my screen too? Yes. So this, a lot of this stuff I'm talking about when I say it's not really hidden listings, they were just things when I worked smarter to get listings faster because I had to get my inventory back up to 40. That's what's created what I'm sharing with you guys today. But let me pause out there for a second. And just say, is there anybody else that uh, wants to share what's going on in your market? Is that something different or is it the same? Uh, I want you guys to get some good stuff out of this because unfortunately I'm not selling you anything. So if you don't get anything, I just wasted an hour. <laughs> Anybody else want to chime in? Otherwise we're going to jump in. All right, cool. So this is find the li hidden listings where there are none, only they really aren't that hidden. Um, a couple other things I'll just tell you about why I'm the one that's even leading this. Um, I, I'm, not so much the guy that needs to be on stage and be in front of people. Look at me, how successful I am. Guys, I'm a guy in Kansas City where we probably got one of the lowest price points around. Uh, you can still buy, by the way, this might be a plug for a referral or an investor. Uh, you can still buy a $70,000 house here that I was telling Dom earlier. You can buy a $70,000 house in Independence, Missouri, home of Harry S. Truman, one of the presidents of the United States, right? Um, for $70,000 and it's livable. It has a fenced yard, a garage, and it has three bedrooms and two baths and it has a basement. So that's Kansas City. But with that being said, the reason why I'm sharing this information with you is because when I got into real estate, it was just like this market right now, only they hadn't taught me anything I needed to know about selling a lot of real estate. I got my license for 400 bucks and then I was 2,500 in the hole by the time I could even talk about real estate. And you're set up and you're doomed to fail in this business sometimes. So it's getting over that hump made me so mad because I had basically moved my raising three girls and my livelihood into a commission only business and nobody taught me what I needed to know. So I started hanging around guys like Vinny and all these successful agents and learning from them. But the difference is I applied the things. So when I talk about this stuff today, it may seem kind of like, well, okay, that was kind of obvious. I should have known that. But how many of you will actually do what we're going to talk about today and go find some listings? That's where I'm going to put the challenge. So that's why I'm here sharing it today. What that led to and that 100 sales a year for 20 something years, what it led to was in 2015, my business partner and my wife, we had worked together for 20 years and built our team as big as nine people. And it was down to one, um, down to two for two of us at one point uh, in 2014 that she was going to pick up one of our clients for a closing that didn't have any family around. And she was on the Kansas side of Kansas City. 
and my wife was going to pick her up. She's an elderly woman, bring her back to the Missouri side to sign her closing documents because she didn't have anybody else here. She got in a car accident on the way to pick her up. That car accident was a head-on collision. She survived the accident, but after 14 weeks of recovery of having the dash smash her hip socket and all that stuff, and she couldn't be on, on her, she had to be on crutches for 12 weeks. 14 weeks after the accident, she just didn't wake up one day and we never got her back. She was in a coma for five months. So here we are running a team, a, a business. Our team had just turned over. We had an assistant and a showing agent that just joined our team right before her accident. And she had been with us like five, six, seven years prior, left to go have a bunch of babies and came back. So I had two people on my team, plus us two. She's in a coma for the next five months. And I had to take her three hours away from Kansas City to the best brain injury hospital I could find to see if we could get her out of it, even though it was an anoxic brain injury. So she just basically, they lost her on the way to the hospital when she wouldn't respond and wake up one day. It was like a Tuesday morning, I think. She didn't wake up. She was snoring and breathing, called 911. They got her stabilized, but they lost her on the way for about four minutes and ER lost her for about four minutes. That lack of oxygen for eight minutes put her into the a, a real true vegetative state. So I know there's a lot of people that have brain injuries that can come out of a coma. We weren't, they, they kept telling me she wasn't going to come back. Well, as I just said, you're going to be the first ones to bring somebody back out of one of these. When your brain's dead, it's dead. You don't get it back. So after five months, we had to let her go. And what happened during that year that I was out of my business for five months, we sold 97 homes with two people on my team based on the systems that I had put in place over the previous 20 years. So these things, these systems, that's why I'm sharing all this because I've written a book with Michael Gerber. If, if you've been around for a long time and you remember the book E-Myth or Entrepreneur Myths, Why Small Businesses Don't Work, I wrote E-Myth Real Estate Agent with Michael because I basically systematized my business like his book said to do it, straight textbook E-Myth. And I called him to thank him for giving me five months with my wife in a coma and try, giving me the opportunity to try and get her back, uh, first of all. And then secondly, he called me back and said, let's write the book. So, and there's other stuff on here too. Um, it, if you're familiar with NAR, 2005, they ran a marketing contest. Who's going to make it big? And at the NAR conference, in front of 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 agents, I won a five carat diamond. I won the marketing contest for realtor.com and homes.com for how to market a property. And it was really a pretty simple thing. I mean, I just use all the fields. I upload all the pictures and I know everybody kind of realtor.com is a four letter word in our industry, but they made me a lot of money and helped me sell real estate. And I got a five carat diamond from them. So I like them. That was a $40,000 win. Um, anyway, so those are the kind of the reasons that I'm in here. I've been featured in a lot of real estate publications and things, uh, just successful marriages in real estate. And I'll tell you what, there wasn't anything magical about my relate my marriage in real estate. It's we had everything systematized and it created a successful real estate business, which allowed us to live our life. So you guys are, this is really open forum. It does not need to be a training thing. So like do this, if you try to unmute and jump in and you want to ask a question, feel free to do that. But if I don't do that, wave your hands around and somebody will go, yo, 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 and get in. But so a couple of things real quick, um, become a ninja, go where the others won't go. And some of the things I'm about to share with you, uh, let me pause just a second, just make sure somebody didn't have a question. I think it might just be, Shell, your background, uh, your microphone does pick up some background noise once in a while. So you might want to mute out if you know how to do that. If not, no big deal. We're, we're good. It's not causing any kind of interruption. But guys, what I'm about to share you, you're not going to have any competition in the things I'm about to share. And these are things that I really did. And it's things that I've had to start doing again, right? Put a little sweat equity into finding contact information. I mean, if you guys talk to your movement mortgage person that got you here today, um, there's probably just a handful um, that I'm working with at this level that I'm saying, hey, I would like to do a realtor training with your realtors and help you guys all get your businesses cranked up in this market. Um, so I do help some other LOs. I do some professional coaching a few days a week because I've got my real estate business so systematized and movements like come coach with us. You've done this before. I've coached for my brokerage. 
um, at high levels, coaching 80 clients at a time. So that's another reason why I'm sharing this with you because I am coaching some of the top LOs at Movement Mortgage right now. And uh, this is one of the little perks that I'm doing for you guys to all grow your businesses. But put a little sweat equity into finding contact information. They're going to talk to you a lot. You guys will probably have a lot more conversations you ever thought about, about your database and your list of people and your relationships more so than getting another loan. Because everybody, your database sucks. And if you haven't talked to every single person in your database in the last month, two months, three months, you are missing some major business. So what we're going to, you'll figure that out in a future class that we're going to do. And I'll share the power of that. That's where my hundred sales a year come from. And when I say a hundred sales a year, my phone rings with listings. I don't go do the cold calling lead generation stuff anymore. I don't spend money buying leads from all these lead generation things. Um, it, I don't have to, the database spits out those hundred sales a year just by staying in touch with. 10,000 people on a systematized basis. You'll hear more about that from them and we'll have a class on that as well. But so this is going to be thinking outside the box because we get trapped in our little boxes sometimes. And uh, you get, I mean, so are you guys, how, how many people are really feel like you might be trapped in a social media box? Not that you bought into it, but it's like everybody keeps talking about how we should be doing more social media, should be doing video, should be doing this, should be doing that. And video, video, video. I mean, you, you got to think outside the box sometimes because uh, as long as I've been around, any program that comes my way, no matter how awesome it sounds, 40 listings in one month from Facebook, whatever that is, if that was true, I know 200 of the top agents in the country that would all be doing it. And when I ask if any of them, what the names are, none of their names show up on anything. So <laughs> these poster child of all these great programs that are out there, I I actually Google the person and just go, okay, I mean, they're a good agent. They sell 20 homes, homes a year. They sell 30 homes a year. But if they even sold 40 homes a year, they didn't sell them all from Facebook. That That's just not happening. So I just don't see, there, there, there's no golden ticket. This is just long-term. Uh, schedule time to work on your business. This will actually, when I get done today, will require you to put some time on your schedule, maybe an hour every two days or three days, just to work on the things I'm about to share with you. Because it is an out-of-the-box thinking, but you are literally going to have no competition. Um, there's never enough training. I could probably just teach this class for the rest of the year. And if you came to every single one of them, you will get something different every time you come. All right, real quick, uh, any questions? I'll pause out, just make sure there's no questions. Okay, um, real quick, you've probably seen this before, focus on your 20%. Um, it's the Pareto principle. 20% of what you do generates 80% of the results and 80% of what you do generates 20% of your results. Guys, if you would like to double your income, so you might be comfortable, you might be good, you might be struggling, right? And you might be having your best year ever. There's a small percentage that are having their best year ever right now because they're just doing more and being on purpose. There's a lot of people that are comfortable and there's a lot of people that are not comfortable that their businesses have dropped, especially for like, I'm probably talking to the bigger teams and the people who have been around longer that have a lot of overhead, man, they are sieving money right now because they, if you drop 20, if you even drop 10% and you have 50 agents on your team in multiple locations, your expenses didn't change with the drop in the business. And most of the agents on that group or in that business model are probably doing average business. So I talk about all the time, like half of the roster of an office is doing zero. And then the next half of the top half is doing maybe one to four or five deals um, a year. I mean, they're lucky if they're doing one or two deals a month, if that's in the top 25%. So what I'm saying is if you would like to double your income, no matter what level you're at, when you figure out what the 20% is that generates 80% of the income, which is what's the fastest way to the cash? 20% is something that's bringing new money into the bottom line, not keeping the money that you already got. Bringing new money into the bottom line is listing a $750,000 house 
where it should be priced and it's going to sell in the next week or two. That's 20% stuff. So how do you go find that $750,000 house? Now, making sure the contract is compliant so you can get paid the commission dollars is not 20% stuff. You already earned the money by getting the listing and getting it sold. This is the 80% stuff that generates 20% of your income. But we spend 80% of our day doing it. So I'm going to just rephrase this one way and we'll move on. If you want to double your income, that means 20% of what you did yesterday. Everyone I'm looking at on this screen right now. 20% of what you did yesterday generated 80% of your income. Literally, if you want to double your income for the rest of this year, just do the 20%, 40% of the day. I'm going to show you the 40% or the 20%. Just add this piece that you get today. Add two or three things that we talk about today and you can double your 20% to 40% and double your income. Everybody kind of uh, excited yet? Have I lost anybody yet? I haven't even gotten anything yet. All right, so we know there's a ton of ways to find leads. I mean, there's a hundred ways to get a hundred sales. And what most people need to do and what you want to do here when you're finding hidden listings is go through the uh, this just standard list. Just Google this, ways to find leads in real estate. You're going to find a list very similar to this. And go through that list and narrow it down to what really you care or like like to do, right? And I know all of us loved for business to come out of our database. So the database could be one, and we'll have we will have a class next month on the power of the database. It's a, it's a gold mine. But once you look at these different things, like what are your top two or three things that you can do or would like to do that if you were going to do more and you were going to add a new thing in to get back up to an inventory level, right? I mean, if I, we were just talking about how you used to carry 40 listings. Now it's like you just carry two or three, but you list them and sell them as fast as you're doing it. Well, that's what I did before is I listed 40 and then I listed and sold them as fast as I got them to keep it at 40. So now I'm just doing it at three so if I want to get the six, I just, I literally have to do more than what I'm doing right now to be at three. I could go to six. I can go to 12. I can go to 40. It's just, I'm going to have to do more, 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 right? So adding that next piece in, that's going to add more. So let's, I'll give you a couple examples. So door knockings on here. If I were going to door knock and actually after I share this, I want you to know that you might consider door knocking again. <laughs> and, and I know who I'm saying this to, okay? I know who I'm saying this to you, but think about this. If I were somebody that does like to door knock, or if you ever door knocked in your life, and if you were an old time real estate agent, you probably did. Did anybody do door knocking? Just raise your hand if you did any door knocking at all ever. I mean, I literally did. Yep, yep, we got Robert in there. Yep, some, some of us haven't turned our camera on yet. Like I said before, we are real estate agents all hanging out together today, learning some cool stuff. So we can network. Uh, might be good to turn your camera on and make sure everybody remembers what you look like. Um, so if I were going to target a neighborhood and I'm going to pick my sphere, my farm that I want to target, here's a different way to look at it. If Brad Corn is going to target a neighborhood and go knock on the doors, I'm actually going to blow up a map of that subdivision. This is actually a subdivision I lived in. So I had this map blown up and I was working through my neighborhood to take over the business in my neighborhood. It's almost like you start at the entrance. I hope you guys can, can you guys see the graphics? Okay. Are they kind of small? Okay. So there's a start, there's an opening to the neighborhood and it's like you just draw a map through the neighborhood and, and an arrow that goes past every door in the neighborhood, like a little maze that you would do at the doctor's office, right? And bring yourself back out at the entrance. This is if I'm going to be on purpose and I'm going to door knock, I want to be on purpose and get the most business possible out of this. So what I'm going to do is every day, and this is a great thing. I mean, I would spend maybe an hour a day. That was it. My goal was to get in front of five set five people in that neighborhood a day, and then I'm done. I'm done doing my door knocking duty, if you want to call it that. So I start at the main entrance, and I go to the very first house, and I knock on the door. And as you'll see here, there's an X on that first house. They answered the door. So I introduced myself. Hey, Brad Corn, live in the neighborhood. Just want to introduce myself. Yeah, I'm a real estate agent. 
I'm actually not here. And and I already knew people aren't moving or there'd be more signs in the yard. So really I'm just making a connection to get them in the database to milk on them until they do move, right? And if it's a $500,000 or if it's a 500 home neighborhood, think about it this way. If there's 500 homes in a neighborhood, would that be a typical size of most neighborhoods for you guys? Anybody want to say it's closer to 100 or closer to 1,000? 100, raise your hand. 500, good, raise your hand. Yep. Okay, cool. So if there's 500 homes in a neighborhood, and what we know from NAR is that they move every five to 10 years, right? And right now, what we're probably experiencing is closer to the 10-year mark because we're not getting enough inventory. People aren't moving. The interest rates went up. They're slowing down. So if it was five or seven, now it's turning into 10 and people are staying just a little bit longer during this period. So for easy math, we're just going to stick with 10. So out of a 500 home neighborhood, 50 people are moving in the next 12 months. 50 people out of the 500 should move in the next, next 12 months. So you narrow that down and that's four of those people are moving a month. Wow. That's about right. You see about four signs in a neighborhood at any given time, right? So if I wanted to get all the listings in that neighborhood, because I know when, when I hang around top producers and people that market and farm and do all that stuff, they say if you get around 10 to 20% market share in a neighborhood, you're doing pretty good. See, my brain is like 10 to 20% market share. I mean, I want 100% market share. Anybody else want 100% market share of a neighborhood, right? So the cost to maintain that 20% market share is horrendous and you have to do it over a long period of time. I can take over 100% market share or let's just say you don't always get 100%. So 80 to 90% market share in five months with a 500 home neighborhood. How I would do that is I'd knock on doors that day. I'm going to door knock every single day, five days a week. This is my my one of my core things. So I'm going to knock on doors and when five people answer, when the fifth person answers their door, and I'm just, Brad, I know you're not probably moving. I just want to introduce myself. I sell real estate in the neighborhood. I live here. Um, so I'm just meeting homeowners and and I, I'll, I'd love to just keep in touch with you and keep you up on what the market's doing. They're going to be like, oh, great. And then I might even say something like, hey, what? because I will be selling or because I am selling a lot of homes in this neighborhood, I like to know what people love about the neighborhood as well, not just me. But what do you love about living here? And I get them, it breaks the ice and gets them just to talk to me about stuff, you know, a little bit. And if they're short, they're short. I get it. But anyway, they're going to get a note. They're going to go on my database and I'm going to stay in touch with them from that point forward. Um, hold on one second. I'm going to pause out here one second, only because I am a live agent. I hate to do this to you guys, but uh, there's a showing happening and she's calling Hey, Vinny, recognize the shirt from the golf tournament last year? Where are uh, the All right, we're back. guys from? How's everybody getting, going so far? We're good. Hi, we're Paul. trying to figure out where everybody was from so we could get those referrals. Like, oh, yeah. So, Roth guys, if you like haven't. a mountain somewhere. Yeah, if you haven't put in the chat yet, put your name, your market that you're in, and even your contact information, because everybody, most everybody in here, besides the movement mortgage loan officer that invited you here, and like I said, there's about four or five of you, five of them that invited you guys here, uh, we can all share referrals, so uh, pass referrals back and forth. And I have a feeling that by the time we finish this, you guys might come back to a couple of these or or. Hopefully you'll find enough value that you will put this on your calendar and come back. Cause I'm just going to give you real stuff that, that I do in my business that helps me be successful. So pulling this back in, by the time I knock on five doors, I put an X on those houses. So tomorrow I'm going to go door knock and I'm going to start at the entrance again. I'm going to pull in, park my car, and I'm going to only hit the houses that don't have X's now. And I'm going to do that until five people answer their door. And after those five people answer their door, I'll knock a few more houses out, right? And then I'll go back tomorrow and do it again and again. And I'm just going until I've met every single homeowner in the neighborhood. 
So you're going to meet 80 to 90% of them over a period of time. Now, let's do the math for a second. If it's 500 home neighborhood and I do five a day, how many years do you think it will take me to get through and meet everybody? <laughs> five months. Five a day, five days a week is 100 a month. I can knock out an entire stinking neighborhood in five months. Are you kidding me? So if you're going to do this and you want to take over market share, remember those 20 that I are out of the 500, the 50 that are moving, it's only four a month. But for me to get four listings in that neighborhood next month, I actually have to get with all 500. Because out of those 500, the 50 that are moving this year and the four that are moving this month don't know they're one of the four that are moving this month or next month until next month. And the four the month after that don't know they're one of the four until the following month. So I actually have to be in touch consistently with all 500 every month for the next 10 years. And if I do that well, I will have 500 listings out of 500 homes. Does that make sense? So you're going to, you know, you're going to have more than that because some people move every four, five to three years. Okay. So any questions on, actually not even questions. How many of you just thought of door knocking a little differently than you've ever thought of before? <laughs> I mean, if that doesn't get you excited, that's okay. We got something easier than that. It's still door knocking. Um, using the internet. Guys, if you're, everybody's, this is like that one thing. Everybody's like with the internet and this post and video and what's my message and what's all this stuff. Guys, just open up the Facebook every day, cautiously, don't get sucked into it. But every day, just scroll through Facebook until you're done. It might be five minutes. It might be 10 minutes. I'll jump on Facebook literally when I'm waiting for the kids to get rounded up to leave. Like I'm... It's not rare that I'm ahead of them. I'm usually the one that they're waiting on. But if I am waiting on people, I open up Facebook and I start scrolling through and I look for people talking about moving, where are they moving? We're moving, we're getting married, we're whatever. All of those things that they're posting and talking about, that's future business. And we're not even paying attention to it. That's an easy one, yet it's so simple, you're probably not even paying attention to it. OK, the second thing I do when I leverage this is I still have a network group that we've been meeting for 19 years. We meet every week for an hour. We do the stand up 20 second infomercials. This core group has generated, I mean, sixty thousand dollars in commissions for me in two years. So it is a very powerful group because of the way we organize it. But they're on social media looking for people talking about it and sending me that link to that person. So a lot of times that person's maybe not on your friends list or anything, but they send me a post and go, hey, somebody's getting ready to move. And then what I do, again, this is detailed stuff. If, I, if I'm not friends with them, I will click on their profile because I can see them. And a lot of times you can click on their friends tab and their friends will pop up. And almost always there's some kind of mutual friend. We have at least one or two or three mutual friends. So then it gives me a reason to talk to three of my our mutual friends that are my friends to give me a reason to call them and go, hey, do you know so-and-so? You know, and, and again, because I stay in touch with my database, they're probably hearing from me every so often, a few times a year. But if I if I pull that up and we're a mutual friend, I'll click on it. And if I haven't talked to them in a while, hey, it's corn, what's going on? And I mean, everybody would know me by that, right? And it's like, hey, what's going on? It's like, oh man, I was just screwing around on Facebook and you came up because you, you were friends with so-and-so and somebody told me they were thinking of moving. And I thought, man, I need to call and see how you're doing. You know, oh, I'm doing great. So do you know them well? And it's like, ah, they're from church. And it's like, okay, well, just curious if you knew them well enough to maybe get me a foot in to talk to them and make sure they have a great experience. All right, I know I kind of, I probably don't need to go into that much detail on it. You guys know how to convert a lead. It's why I don't teach script classes. Scripts are amazing and you need scripts in your business, but you don't really need the script when somebody says, yeah, I'm thinking about selling. I mean, every script you learn is out the window. It's like, great, when can we meet? <laughs> yeah. So the scripts help you organize a lot of your business, but you don't need scripts to get business. You need people and relationships to get business and you use the scripts to get them to make smarter decisions, right? Uh, real world stuff that that showing that I was just dealing with my sellers like 
literally cuckoo off the chart, just totally can't handle the situation, but he has to move. And he's fired, wants to fire me every day and reduce my commission. I have scripts and there's a reason why he's paying more commission and he's adding to it, but I'm using the scripts to keep him. I could easily just say, dude, this is too much. I'm done. But he's a basket case and he does need to move because of his situation. So I can't just leave him. I can't let him go. I'm just going to have to deal with it. Use my scripts to calm him down, get him to price it right, get him to let the showings go through when they want to cancel them and they have to move. You know, I, I know where I'm going. All right. Here's another one. This is if you're looking for things to post. I mean, there's there's just all this video stuff going out there. And now the words are coming up and we're giving all these tips. And guys, I'm paying attention to it. It's cool. You should do it. Do something consistently, persistently to be in front of people. But you're not making the video to get a stranger to call you because they watched your video and they watched the words and they heard what you said. And it's like, oh, my gosh, I got to call them. I'm buying a house now or I should sell now that you're, you're talking on social media to everybody you're already in relationship is seeing your stuff everywhere, right? If you follow me on social media, or if you don't, you might after today. I mean, I just posted a thing about going on a roller coaster today. We have a thing called Worlds of Fun, which is like a Six Flags or anything. It's our local one. And they brought back this 80s roller coaster that was the best roller coaster ever, the Zambezi Zinger. I posted that. I've got more people that are commenting on that that are going to be clients selling and buying and selling real estate, then posting a video on how you can upgrade your house and make more money. You know, you're not going to get a stranger to call you on it. It's for your people that already know you. So this is one that I posted to show this was one particular house that I was doing a market analysis for. And I was looking at it, it's like, oh my God. So what you can't see down here is at the very bottom, the very first time this property sold to the second time it sold was a 10 year period. And that 10 year period, it went up uh, $21,000 total equity in 10 years. The next time it sold was only six years and it went up $28,000 in equity. And then the most recent time it just sold was in 2020, but in a four year period, that seller made $95,000 in equity. So when we, this is the kind of stuff I post on social media talking to the people that already know me that know I know real estate and they're the ones that are sitting on the fence because they're like ah these interest rates Brad I just don't know and it's like if they're one of my renters I will say did you see that thing I said why should you buy now and they're like yeah I did and it's like that's I was talking to you you know so I do my social media for them not for any other reason all right let's see we're we're doing great on time let me pause out here before I move into the next thing. Um, any questions so far about anything? Or maybe give me some feedback, some thumbs up if you're getting a couple of good ideas out of here. Am I getting you to think outside the box? Give me a sideways thumb if you're like, all right, you've told me everything I've already heard before and I do all this stuff. This is sideways thumb. All right. <laughs> yeah. And a downward thumb if, oh my God, this is so basic. Why wasn't I doing this before? And the down, the thumbs down is for you, right? No, we're not beating each other up here. It's some of this stuff you just, I don't know. Um, how am I doing, guys? My movement mortgage buddies, am I doing all right? Okay, cool. Am I bringing good value for your people? Okay. So finding buyers and getting listings. I talked about finding the hidden listings. Guys, I mean, seriously, when I share this, promise me you'll go do this because this is like a gold mine. And it's so out of the box. I share, I've share. i shared it with thousands and thousands and thousands of agents and they're not doing it yet. This is so, so simple. Here's what we know. People move every five to 10 years, right? The other NAR statistics, if you pay attention to them and they haven't changed a lot over the years, is that people move within a five mile radius of where they currently live. Have you guys heard this before? Okay, so it's a NAR stat that people will typically move within five miles of where they currently live. And just to break it down, I think the reason why is because do you have buyers who say, I wanna keep my kids in a certain school, All right? 
So that's within a five mile radius. So they're trying to keep their kids and their family in a certain area. Now, not everybody does that. And actually, since COVID, we're seeing a lot of people moving to weird places, right? So I'm saying in general, most people move within five miles of where they currently live. They also move up in price 50% of where they currently live. Now, what I mean by that, and this is a NAR stat, so we know NAR spends a lot of money on these stats, so I pay attention to them. But if we know they live in a $300,000 house, they will most likely move up to about a 450, 50% above wherever their current value is. So if I have a buyer that's looking for a $450,000 house, I can search a five mile radius of where they really want to be or the whole MLS area that they want to move to. And I could go back and look for homes that sold five to 10 years ago that sold for about 200 to $300,000. Because now with appreciation over five to 10 years, that $300,000 house is probably 400, 450, right? So just take this into account here and absorb this information for a second. If I go to sales that happened five to 10 years ago, what do we know about those people? What kind of conversation are they starting to have around the house? Moving, right? Moving. So these are off-market listings that are about to become listings because the average person moves every five to 10 years. And if it's in my buyer's search criteria, here's the fun part. I can literally put in the ideal, perfect house that my buyer would love. And you have those buyers that come to you. Well, Brad, we want four bedrooms. We want three car garage. We want a finished basement and a fenced yard. Uh, we'd like an elevator, right? Whatever it might be. But I could literally search five to 10 years ago, which is a long period of time. And I can pull up houses with that elevator. And I can then just go through the history and see if they have moved since then. If those people are still in the house, you will take a list of probably 150, 200, 300 homes that by the time you go through the history on these, you're going to end up with a good 10 or 20 people that haven't moved yet, that are still in the same house that is now worth about 450 and they probably paid 200 to 300 for it. Do I need to explain that one? I mean, that's we're getting into some deep math right now. Are you guys okay on this? Do you get how simple this is? Or is there anybody that has a question about it? So what do you do with it, right? So once I get that, now this is where I said, put a little time into your business, work on your business. It's going to take a little bit of work to find a phone number for them. It's gonna, we have tax records. So you have their name and you have their address. And here's the one thing I know that you'll think you want, but it's worthless. Email. You do not need this person's email. You are not going to get an opportunity to see this house through an e some email thing. And if you do have an email message that would get one of those people to say, yeah, come look at my house. I want to know what your message is because I'll, I'll pay for it if you're getting that result with it. The reality is, is that now I have to figure out how to cross paths with these people that own this house and see if they've thought about buying or selling. And here's the best part. If they actually haven't thought about buying or selling yet, are you when you do this and you start calling, first of all, you won't call 10 sellers and have 10 people say, no, we're not moving. You'll have two or three people say that because that's their natural response. They weren't moving. But as soon as you hang up the phone, they have been thinking about moving. And now I just sparked the conversation inside the house. So this is a way to build a listing inventory for yourself. Second thing it does is you're building an opportunity to show your buyer some houses that aren't on the market that they won't have to compete with. And they don't have to settle for the script that I've we've all been using for the last couple of years of, so you have 10 things you want in a house. You're going to have to settle for five of those, maybe four. The, the house that has all 10 things you want doesn't exist. And if it does, it's going to go for $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 over asking price with 50 offers, right? So you've got to be happy with not four out of your 10 things right now. Let's get you in that house. 
And then in three years, we'll resell that one and get you the house that has eight or nine or 10 once the market adjusts. So take advantage of the market. The second script I use on that, and I'll give you, I mean, I, I said scripts, but these are the people that I'm getting to move through this process is I say, right now, you will sell your house for the most it's going to sell for, for this neighborhood. You're going to get top dollar. You're not going to have to sell anything cheap. So you can cash out of this neighborhood and let's get you into the next neighborhood. Only we'll try to buy a house towards the lower end of that neighborhood so you can gain some equity there. Or in, in that equity position, it's like move you into a bigger neighborhood where that appreciation is bigger than it is where you are now. You're, you're already, your appreciation is tapped out here. We just need to move you to the next great investment. That's really a place you could call home that you can get some more appreciation. So those are the kind of conversations I have. But for these people here, once I find a phone number for them, oh, by the way, if I don't find a phone number for them, what do you think I'm going to do? Probably go knock on the door. <laughs> Why not? I mean, what else are we doing? I don't have 40 listings right now. I have three. I have all the time in the world to go knock on a door, especially if it's this kind of door, right? So um, I'm going to go knock on the door if I can't find their number. But if I find their number, write this down. This is a great website, fastpeoplesearch.com. If you have not heard of this before, it's free. And there's a bunch of them you pay for, but fastpeoplesearch.com. If any of my, my friends on here can type that in the chat, that would be great. Fastpeoplesearch.com. And you can search by putting the name and the city that a person lives in, which we have from the tax records. And it will pull up there. If, if it pulls up their address, then you're probably pretty accurate. And if you scroll down in there, it'll tell you their spouse's name, which you might see on the tax record. So that's verifying it. Remember I said, spend a little time getting contact information. Right. And in there will be all the phone numbers that have ever been associated with their name or contact or something online. So there might be seven phone numbers there. I literally put those phone numbers on my list and I'm going to call each of them. And I'm in here eh, 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 ding, 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 eh, eh, about five or six times. But if a person answers the phone and it's not them, OK, that's not the number. I just call through the numbers until they actually answer the phone. It's got to be one of them most of the time. And some of the times it won't be any of them. So I don't have a phone number. I'll look a different way. And so there are like my methods for finding information. There's another class that we'll have how to find the missing information, how to like become a little bit of a detective because I spend my time getting their contact information. It's valuable. It's real, it's real money. So there's using Google, Facebook, um, Google, you just Google their name. You'll find out where they work. You might get a work number. Uh, Facebook, sometimes under the profile, they actually have their phone number in there. They have their address too, sometimes, right? So wherever I got to find it, I'm just going to go through all those mediums, fast people search, Google, Facebook, and see if I can find them. LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn always has their contact information. Sometimes they have their phone number. So you can call them. That script would look like, hey, I know this call is coming out of left field. Um, but you live over in Waterfield, right? I saw that you guys bought your house several years ago and the market, I'm sure you've heard the market's crazy, but have you thought about moving recently or is there any chance you might be moving in the next you know, few months? And they'll say no, most of the time it's an automatic knee jerk response. And I'll say, well, th that's the only reason I was calling is your house matches exactly what one of my buyers are looking for. And we've made offers on a couple other houses in the 450 to 475 price range, knowing that they paid 200 to 300 for it, right? And they would make that offer all day long on a house like yours. So I don't know if you, if you haven't thought about selling, that's one thing. But if you would like to know what the real true market value of your house is, knowing that you just told me you're not selling, if you would, if you would grant me the opportunity just to show it to a live buyer and see what they think, I'm going to tell them you're not thinking about selling, but that you've allowed us to come look at your home to compare it to the other things that are out there. Um, if you would do that, I, I would I would bring them over and you can, if they like your house, they'll tell you what they think it's worth, right? Doesn't mean you have to sell to them. But so that sounds weird, but you got to do more. You got to do something different. And what I will do in that there that opportunity, out of maybe like 10 homes, I get maybe three to five of them to consider. What really happens is 
nobody does anything the first shot. It's the follow-up that I do a week later, a couple of weeks later, that some of them are like, you know, we've been thinking about what you're saying. And yeah, I think it'd be all right to have your buyers come look. We would be curious to know what our house is really worth. And I said, well, this is a real live value. So, and I'll, again, I'll tell them it's not for sale, but if they really like it, they may make, they may throw a number out on the table. And, and so how's that, how are you going to turn that down if you're a homeowner? It's like, I have nothing to lose here if you think about it. So usually about five of those, three to five of those 10 will actually turn into an opportunity, maybe not to bring the buyer, but for me to go buy and give them a value on their house. You see how this is going? I'm looking for a way in the door to an opportunity that I have zero competition to. They have not talked to any other realtors. They're not even thinking about selling. So it gets me in the door. Once you do this for a while, now you have a list of the off-market properties for everybody in your marketplace. Let me tell you, the first two or three buyers you sell a house to, if you plan this right and they post on social media, our realtor found us a house that wasn't even for sale, you're going to start having every buyer contact you. So get ready. These are all things that amplify. I know that's pretty detailed. Let me pause out. Did I cover that well enough? Is there any questions that are coming up on it? Hey, Brad. Yeah. Um, what about Spokio? Have you ever had much success with Spokio? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing on that one is that I'll sometimes click on it from Fast People Search, but it goes through that whole, like, uh, it takes 10 minutes for it to go through the whole thing and processing through. I know people, you can pay for Spokio. Uh, I haven't paid for anything because I don't, they're still only accurate about 70% of the time and Fast People Search is free. And what about Mojo? Uh, Mojo is more the dialer, right? Yeah, but they'll, you can do a reverse um I'll look up i like that yeah wherever i can find their number from okay. is what the goal is but i'm literally going to do whatever it takes to get into a two-way conversation with them whether that's in person knocking at the door or calling them and they will that's my lead generation right there yeah, yeah, right yeah. If, if i'm doing any cold calling this is more of warm calling <laughs> right sure. i mean i have okay. something of value for them so yeah whatever it's going to take to get in front okay. of them okay Another way you guys can do this is you could pull up. This is what realtors, real estate agents do. When I was coaching real estate agents, like I want to farm this neighborhood. It's so awesome. It's like, great. How many homes are in there? What's well, a gated community and it's 40 homes. Okay. You're going to farm a 40 home neighborhood. Um, let's see if they're moving every 10 years, that's four every year. This is not the neighborhood to focus on. I go to the neighborhood that has the most turnover. If I'm going to target a neighborhood, going back to that neighborhood knock on doors, I don't just randomly pick a neighborhood. I'm going to the 500 home neighborhood that's had 75 sales in the last 12 months because that neighborhood's turning over. So I'm going to have more sales. So again, a little bit of research time on the front end to figure out which neighborhoods have the most homes and the most turnover and the highest percentage. You might be pulling up one day researching 20 or 30 different neighborhoods in your marketplace. Find the one that turns over the most and target that one and then go do your five to 10 year sale. So even if you don't have a buyer, you can still call the homes that were bought five to 10 years ago because they're thinking about selling. Here's another one. This is an easy one. Now that you get the five to 10 year ago sale, which by the way, I didn't say this in most MLSs, you should be able to go to sold date, right? You would go to sold date and I would put in I'd be looking right now from 2013 to 2018. I would pull up sales from January 1st of 2013 to December 31st of 2018. And it really doesn't matter if I do 18 or 19 or if I do 12 or 13. That's going to pull up a list of solds in that area that you're looking, right? Or that neighborhood that you're looking specifically, right? And then that's where I'm going to start going through and go through the history and see if they're still if they've sold it since then then right wipe that one off the list but if you has anybody heard of this thing called the golden letter it's like a common thing around the industry right now it literally is one line it says if you've thought about or would you mind sh letting me show my, your property at blah 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 to a current buyer that i'm working with if you've thought about selling give me a call something like that so that's how I kick off the golden letter plan is I'm not just blasting golden letters out to an entire neighborhood. 
I'm only hitting people that are still in their home from five to 10 years ago. So I'm real methodical about it because that's going to get me a way better, bigger return on investment, right? But pulling up old expireds. So old expireds, it's like, we don't have expireds in this market. Well, we did five years ago and they're still in the house. We did when the market crashed and they were upside down and they're still in the house. So another fun one, this is a bonus one for you. I think we got just a couple minutes left, right? Here's a bonus one for you. Like when I'm going through tax records, I'm finding how many investors have seemed like they've taken over your market. So I am now adding the investors into my database because it shows their comp their corporate address for each property. It's, an, it's like a vacant property or it's a rental, but now I've got the company name and their, their company address. I'm adding them in and find hidden listings, start marketing to them and say, hey, have you thought about upgrading your inventory? And I call it upgrading inventory, meaning sell off the bottom 25% that's not working for you. Get rid of the dead stuff. And you can throw that dead stuff on the market, whether it's wholesale, lower than value, whatever, but you're teaching them to get rid of the bottom 25% and you're gonna help them buy a new top 25%. So there's another way to find hidden listings is through the investors because they've got hundreds and hundreds of properties. So check those, just make sure they haven't resold and that's the ones that make it on the list. By the way, that is probably an hour a day. How many of you would rather do this for an hour a day than just pick up a phone book and call cold call for an hour, right? I mean, not we're not doing it anyway. <laughs> so do something on purpose during your call, your lead gen time. Um, and then this one, get back to the missed listings. Okay, this is one I share with every the people that invited you to this call. I mean, they might have taken sixty apps and they've got ten closings this year. And there's fifty people that have filled out an application that we haven't done anything with yet. Then there's a difference between somebody not being qualified. But eventually somebody gets their credit score up and they get their crap straightened out. So how many people inquired about possibly thinking about selling and how many buyers do you have sitting in your inbox right now that came through whatever lead source you are using right now? If you're getting some from realtor.com or your company site, what do the, where are those in your inbox? They come in with the same kind of subject line. Pull up all of those buyers that are sitting in your inbox that never responded. Give that to the person that got you on this call today and say, see if you can revive any of these. And what I found is that it's not the new, new internet lead that comes in. It's the one from six months to 12 months ago that they realized they couldn't qualify or they had just signed a lease or whatever, that now I'm catching them when they are, their lease is coming up again. And we'd finally get them to call the loan officer and do the freaking application. So the older the lead is, the better it is. So your missed listings, your missed buyers, any of those, I'm just, man, if you can get organized and get on purpose, this is something that nobody I know of is doing on a consistent, persistent basis daily or weekly. So anyway, just if you got buyers, yeah, if you got buyers getting them off the fence, you know, the one thing this seller that just wants to take his house off the market, throw his hands up and give up. This is so horrible. It's like, dude, you got to let people see your house if you want to sell it. I can't sell it on a phone call. So do you need to move or do you going to stay by your neighbor and just decide this is the way you're going to live life? Because they're the neighbor feuds, right? So are you definitely moving? Well, if you're if you are definitely moving, then here's your script. If you're definitely moving, no matter what, then between now and when your house goes on the market, you are losing buyers. You're losing buyers. In fact, the interest rate could go up 1% and we'll lose a whole bunch of buyers. But if you're definitely moving, the sooner you're on the market, you have more buyer opportunities. If you come on a month from now or two months from now, you have to deal with whatever buyers are in the market then. And the reason why I say this is because if I do put a sign in your yard today, I, I already know. What if I showed up tomorrow with somebody that wanted to buy your house, right? Let's just say they want to offer you 10000 under your asking price and they want you to be out in a week. What do you think the seller's doing? Well, I wouldn't take that. Exactly. So the fact that you're on the market doesn't mean you have to sell. In fact, what if they don't even have their house on the market yet? They qualify for two loans and they would wait 60 days, 90 days, 180 days to move in. 
but they want your house now so because it's such a competitive market they'll pay full price and they'll let you stay in the house till you find another house well if i got that buyer today then i could really have some leverage and i didn't wouldn't have to like give up on my buy side right so if I did that today, I have more options. I can take it. I can not take it. I get to control everything. So just because you're on the market doesn't mean you have to sell. Is this the best time of year to sell? I mean, usually even in the fall, they say that stuff. And I always say, right now, May, would you believe it or not, you're going to steal the next round of summer buyers off the market right now today. If you come on in middle of June or July when the kids are out of school and you're finally ready, that's when everybody else is coming on the market. So you are going to have more competition in the next 30 to 60 days than you do right now. So again, I just said, you can take an offer now on all your terms, be under contract and steal the next summer buyer off the market before all your competition hits the market and they're stealing your buyer from you. I call those the hook, line and sinker scripts. It's kind of hard to not list their house. If they are moving, no matter what, I'm probably going to go home with the listing that day. So we got to quit, get them off the fence. And then last, just to finish out, right as we hit the top of the hour, <clears throat> staging scripts. I mean, again, in this market, there's so many agents that are so like, I have a, I have a stager, we have a photographer, we get the house ready. We do, so, I'm, everybody can do their business their own way. I don't necessarily like pre-listings I don't think the client gets a benefit out of pre-listings. I think we do. We just get more buyers off of it. But even that's tough to get today. I mean, so I'm not quite sure what the pre-listing inventory is because if somebody's in the market today waiting for that house to hit the market and they've been beat out on two other offers, I don't think they're going to sit and wait two weeks just till it hits the market to see if that's the one they want to buy. The next house that comes on the market that they like better than that one or about the same, they're going to buy that one because it's going to have multiple offers on it. So in my theory, I think we're losing buyer opportunities, but really I get it. It's to get more buyers on our side. It's not really benefiting the client. So what I do is I say between now and when you get your house staged, photos, all this stuff that you got to fix, do whatever, we could hit the market right now while you're doing that stuff. And somebody might buy the house just like it is, as is. Hell, even if they asked you, offered you 10000 under your asking price and you haven't got all those repairs done yet, that might be worth selling, but you get to make that choice. So I'm all about now, 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 and I do all the photos and I do all that stuff. So I say, just take everything now, no more than one or two things on every wall shelf and per, uh, shelf or, or flat surface. I don't care if you pack everything in the garage to the ceiling. We know master bedroom and kitchen sells a house, right? And living room. There's not a garage in my career that was stuffed that stopped the house from selling. Not a one. There wasn't one house ever in my career that the closet stopped the house from selling. It was more than that. Shove your crap under the bed, shove it in the closet, shove it in the garage so I can take a picture of the living room and a picture of the kitchen. Um, so and, and I get them on the market as fast as possible. There is no waiting. So that's just me. Um, so anyway... Great opportunity, open house, this listing that I do have, my psycho seller. So I don't like, I mean, I haven't had to do open houses in years. I did an open house, but I put 10 signs up a week before the open house. It's Monday, I'm having it on Saturday, right off the main entrance. The day of the open house, I put 20 more open house signs up all around, just shoving every kind of traffic in. I had flyers out. I put it on every website I could put it on. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it more more on purpose and do everything I can to get the most people through so I can meet people. Well, crap, out of that came meeting two people in the neighborhood that now I'm connected with and we're this little underground neighborhood lake community. So I'm in with them, but I picked up this listing from that and got a buy sale. That's a million dollars worth of real estate because I just freaking did it. It's like, oh man, I need to do an open house. It's real. I mean, I need the exposure in this neighborhood I need to do it. But I went in like, oh my gosh, I'm doing an open house. What, what do I do to make it awesome? And I got a million dollars worth of sales sitting on the books right now. Don't forget about mail. Mailing direct to the mailbox is like a gold mine. Not mass mailing, not mass marketing, but just dropping something of value in the mail once in a while. 
you might, I'm going to put a little pressure here. You might get stuff in the mail from the people that invited you to this call a little more often. And it's okay. It's all about top of mind branding and marketing. And it's not whether you look at the piece or not, doesn't matter. It's just keeping your name in front of them. So you might start getting mail all of a sudden from these guys. Um, and just anything and everything that you're doing. So anyway, I'm going to end it there because we're at the end. I got a free resource site that you guys can go to. And it's the title of the book I wrote, emythrealestateagent.com. When you go there, you will register. I mean, you're filling out a form with your name and stuff. Put in the comments anything that you liked about the class or you know what market you're in. You might even throw your address in there just so I have it. And as soon as you hit submit, I'll get your information so you're in my database for referrals. But then it's going to take you to a site that has recordings of all these webinars that I do. I record them all and then I throw them up on the website. So this one should be up there shortly. What do you guys think? Good stuff? Was this worth, do I owe anybody double the money they paid to come today? Because it wasn't worth anything. <laughs> Always good when you speak, Brad. Oh, thank you, man. That that means a lot, seriously. Hey, Coach, got a question for you. Yeah. So when you said these cards out, like you've got me doing, um, I'd say right now, just in the last week, 80% of them are replying with a text and saying, thank you. Do I let that go and follow the plan or another quick reply? Follow the plan. I mean, we're just, all we're doing is we're all getting to know each other. So even all the, everybody on this call today, I mean, I hope that we're going to just interact somewhere along the way. And it's not like, I mean, seriously, like real estate agents, we're busy. So it's not like we're going to be calling each other, asking for business. It's just like, hey, I hope that you'll have a question about something and you'll pick up the phone and call me, right? My cell phone number, by the way, if somebody wants to type it in the chat, you can. Call me on my cell phone, 816-215-3214. By the way, you're, you're, the person that invited you has it too. 816-215-3214. They have my email um, anything you see on the website that you have questions about, like I said, when you go in, you're going to get to experience my follow-up a little bit because uh, I stay in touch with everybody I meet. So even though you might not get a handwritten note from me right now today, whenever we cross and connect and, and really have a good conversation, you probably will get one then, right? So, but you'll be on a follow-up plan until we cross paths again. And you might get invited to this just about every month. I'm going to do this kind of once a month for, for my friends and help out new friends. Cool. Anything else? I will just say, um, if we send out an invite for the database, uh, you know, class or whatever, you are a database guru. And I can see how, and I know this is the first one, you know, for a lot of people on here but I can see how it all ties together and it just works. So yeah, hopefully, relation. yeah, hopefully everyone comes back and can experience that. It's it, it's the, whenever you hear it's about the follow-up, follow-up sucks. When I said earlier, your database freaking sucks, guys, it sucks. Because if you have 500 people in your database, you should be closing 50 of deals just from the database, which really means that if you're closing 20 or 30 deals a year, then you're really going to be at 80 deals a year because all, I mean, I come from the referral world, you know, the, the, the couple of trainers out there that are all about referrals and they talk about 98% referral business. It's not true. It, it's not true because if it were 98% referral, then what you're telling me is you suck at marketing your listings and you don't know how to get buyers off your listings. I mean, it's just not true. It's 50% of our referral business comes from our database and the other 50% comes from things we're doing business on. So, it, I, I mean, again, I just, I don't know. I get into all this stuff and then when I get in and do stuff, I realize, well, there's, you know, one of them was you get two referrals from every client that you work with. Fine, I sold 100 homes a year. Then that means I'm selling 300 homes next year. You know how many years, how many I sold the next year? 100 again. I'm not getting two referrals. I don't care what you do. You're not going to get two referrals from every active client. It's just not going to happen because not, you now you're going to get introductions. You can get introductions, but only 20% of the population is ever moving at any given time. So if I had a hundred sales and I got two referrals from everyone, that's 200 people. Now those 200 people will turn into 20 sales. 
it'll actually turn into 200 sales over the next 10 years, but they don't know if people are moving right now or not. They're just giving you an introduction, but I'm, I'm going to add 20 sales if I actually got 200 referrals, see how that all works. So I, I don't mind calling things out and then just saying, Hey, this is how you work it. You get those 200 people in the database and you stay, you have a system to stay in touch with them for 10 years and you'll get all of them or at least 80, 90% of them. Right. It's been fun hanging out with you guys. Uh, I really appreciate everything. And we'll just, I mean, I, I've got 32 years experience and not that you guys don't have experience either. I've just paid attention. Like when I sell real estate, it's my laboratory more than anything. And I'm just paying attention to what I hear us hearing as agents and then what it really comes down to. And that's where my classes come out of. So the database one is going to be a big one. Um, and just how to reconnect with your database. There will be multiple of those. There's a whole class just on reconnecting with your database. And it's not about selling real estate. It's about reconnecting. And once you reconnect, then you'll earn the right to then get the real estate. But just know that your database right now, 20% of them are moving. If you have a thousand people in your database, there's literally 200 sales happening or a hundred sales happening every 10 years, somewhere between a hundred to 200 sales happening right now. You're just missing them. So anyway, we'll, we'll talk more about that. Look forward to hanging out with you guys some more. And, uh, I'm sure if there's anyone in your office that you think is a cool agent, you're going to let the person know that invited you and say, hey, add this person to your list. I want them to come. And uh, as we get to know each other more, we'll share more. Cool. Good to see you again, Vinny. Thanks for your contribution, Robert, and everybody else for showing up. I could tell you guys were paying attention, uh, even if you didn't turn your video on. All right, Thanks, guys. Coach. See you later.